Archospheres are one of the weirder elements of space exploration. How do they work? How do you fold them? What is inversion? Welcome to Lawrence Plays, where I'll be taking an in-depth look at archospheres and showing you how to deal with them. Archospheres are a very late game element in Factorio space exploration. They can be considered a resource, however they are significantly harder to obtain than most of the other resources, and most of the time they don't actually get consumed when you use them. You find Archospheres by travelling out to the deep space asteroid fields and launching Archosphere collectors in probe rockets, much like gathering the asteroid solar and deep space data cards. When you launch an Archosphere collector, it will collect from two pools, the specific asteroid field that you're in and the general deep space one. All pools have diminishing returns, meaning that the chances of you getting an Archosphere decrease the more you take from that pool. Your first Archosphere Collector will probably come back with five Archospheres, four from the Deep Space Pool and one from the Asteroid Field, but if you keep launching, the total gain will start to go down, perhaps only generating one or two from the Deep Space Pool and only finding one every two or three launches from the Asteroid Field Pool. If you now travel off to a different Asteroid Field, you'll find that you're pulling from a fresh Asteroid Field Pool, and so you'll get an Archosphere every launch from it to start with, but you're still stuck with the same Deep Space Pool. This means that getting your first 20 or 30 Archospheres is quite easy, only requiring maybe half a dozen launches. But the more of them you want, the more you'll have to travel and the more launches you'll have to do. To make matters worse, Archosphere collectors require a significant amount of antimatter. As you can see here, it's taking 10 antimatter canisters, each of which requires a thousand antimatter in order to fill it up. And when you first start going out after them, your antimatter production is likely to be fairly slow. So, that's collecting them. And yes, it's a bit of a faff getting a decent number. But the good news is that nearly all of the uses for Archospheres don't actually use them up. They just change them a bit. You see, there are actually eight different types of Archospheres, each one named after a Greek letter, and when you make something, it'll take in some Archospheres and return different ones. For example, space dilation data takes in a Zeta and an Omega, and will either return two Lambdas or two Phi's. So great, once you've got your Archospheres, you'll never run out! Sounds really simple, doesn't it? The problem arises in trying to maintain a supply of all of them. For example, if we look at the Deep Space Science 3 data card recipes, we see that to make a complete set, we require one of each Archosphere. That's nice and tidy, but unfortunately on the output side it's a bit messier. Each recipe has two possible outputs and it changes randomly between them, but even if you take the average outputs, you'll find that you end up with excess Zetas, Phi's and Epsilons, fewer Omegas and Gammas, and no Etas. This is clearly not sustainable and it gets worse with the more advanced uses. Fortunately, there are some extra recipes to fix this. These recipes take in Archospheres and then output different Archospheres. Folding recipes will take in two specific types and return another two. Inversions take in four and return the other four. Nope, there aren't any one-to-one -one recipes. That would be far too easy. And, well, this is endgame content. After lots of head-scratching, I've decided that the best way to think about Archosphere processing is to split them into two types like this, which I'm going to call left and right. Each folding recipe is represented by a pair of coloured arrows. You'll see that each recipe turns one left Archosphere into another left Archosphere, and one right Archosphere into another right Archosphere. This allows you to turn those excess Zetas into the missing Gammas, but will also turn the Phi's into Epsilons at the same time. The clever bit is that the arrows aren't in matched pairs on either side, so if you run blue, then purple, you'll turn a zeta into a theta and back again, but you'll also turn a lambda into an epsilon and a xi into a phi. Because these don't match, with enough stirring you can get both sides balanced, ensuring that you have the same number of phi's, xi's, lambdas and epsilons. This seems to be enough for Deep Space Science 3, and this makes sense because looking at the total inputs and outputs for the Deep Space Science 3 data cards, we see they're evenly balanced between left and right types of Archosphere. We only need to fix the distribution per side. Later tech is a bit less neat. We start having to produce Naquium processors, which takes in all four right Archospheres plus two of the left ones, and then outputs six lefts. 
This means that no matter what combination of the folding recipes we run, we can never get back to where we started. So we use the inversion recipe which takes one from each of the left and returns one of each on the right. This brings the sides back into balance so the normal folding recipes can then balance the individual types. By running both types of balancing recipe in the right quantities, you can ensure that you maintain an even supply of all of the arcospheres. However, it's best to make sure that you have a decent number of them so that you don't run out of one type when the balance isn't perfect or, or when some are in use. I currently have 191 arcospheres from 98 launches, which is plenty to run one machine making each recipe, but I would recommend trying to get at least 100 before you really start getting into this. So, that's a lot of background information on how arcospheres work, but I imagine you're here to see how my balancing system actually works. I'm sure there are many different ways that it can be done, but mine I feel is nice and simple. I keep all of my arcospheres in a storage warehouse and then use the circuit network to monitor its contents. For each folding recipe, I add up the number of the input arcospheres for that recipe available and subtract the number of the output arcospheres. So in this case, this folding recipe turns phi's and gamma's into omega's and xi's, so I add up the 15 phi's and the 15 gamma's on the input side, and then subtract the 14 omega's and the 14 xi's, which gives me a total of 2. I then link that to the inserter that loads the grab facility that does the folding, and if the total is greater than 2, that is, if there's at least 2 more of the input arcospheres than the output, then the inserter will load the grab facility and the arcospheres are converted. Here, my arcospheres are currently close enough to be balanced, so I don't feel it needs to run, but if I take some Omegas out of the warehouse, you'll see that the system kicks into action to compensate. I have a very similar setup for the machines doing the inversion recipes. Here, I add up all of the right arcospheres and subtract the left ones. One machine will run if the total is greater than 8, and the other will run if the total is less than minus 8, ensuring the sides can only be out of balance by up to 7 before an inversion will run, bringing it back to being much closer to the balance. This means all of these machines will only run if, they're, if running their recipe would bring the balance closer to being even, and so over time balance is more or less achieved. This probably isn't the most efficient way to do it, but it does work well enough and it's nice and simple. I have also heavily moduled the grab facilities with speed modules in order to make sure the recipes run quickly, which makes it a bit more reliable. As you can see, if I mouse over the warehouse, the system is working. I have between 14 and 16 of all of the Arcosphere types available, meaning that they're balanced to the level of accuracy that I expect, and there are easily enough available for all of my science production to run. I decided that due to the relative scarcity of arcospheres, I, I didn't want to have hundreds of them sitting on belts. I, I simply haven't got enough of them to do that. So I've gone against my normal design principles and have used logistics bots to supply them. Each machine which builds something using arcospheres has a blue requester chest with the arcospheres needed, but they're returned to the store by belt. Because arcospheres are valuable, Rather than just letting output belts from machines back up when there's excess production, I've decided it's better to read the belt contents after the spheres are filtered off, and then cut the supply to the machine when enough of that product has been made. This prevents the system from holding a large number in the machine's output and on the belt, ensuring that they are returned to the pool as quickly as possible. To further reduce waste, I can turn off the logistics chest requests when enough of the product has been made, meaning that those arcospheres are never even brought out to the machine. This is probably unnecessary optimization, but I see no harm in doing so. If I wanted to expand this system, I could move some of the folding grab facilities away from the main warehouse and feed them with the logistics bots in the same way I'm currently doing with the inversion facilities, or even feed them with belts. This would mean more arcospheres would be held outside the storage area, but it would allow for faster folding if it became necessary. That said, even with a lot of speed modules, the grav facilities don't use very much power, so I think for now at least, speed modules are the way to go. I've spoken to a couple of friends who are at similar points in space exploration, and their arcosphere processing systems seem to run on the same basic principle. Run a recipe if it would bring the system closer to balance than it currently is. But they've generated much larger and more complex systems for running it, as you can see here in these screenshots. I suspect it should be possible to be a bit cleverer about it and come up with a system that involves less wasted folds, but I'm happy with the level of complexity and effectiveness that I've built up here. 
Have you come up with a different Arcosphere balancing system? Let me know about it in the comments, especially if you can give me a brief high-level summary of how it works. I'd love to see how other people have approached this problem. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.